I'm the YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Mike's Mike. Right off the bat, I'd just like to say fuck studio interference when it Could comes he maybe to not it. swear quite so much? Right off the bat, I'd just like to say screw studio interference when it comes to almost every filmmaking decision made within the last decade. That's a really negative thing to start this off with. We need something a little more upbeat, you know? I'd like to talk today about studio interference and the effect that has on the current film industry. Be it from terrible decisions made to appeal to the wrong crowd. What? The insertion of nostalgic elements to bring back older fans. Or the salvaging of what might have been an otherwise forgettable movie. Studio interference is something that has been happening for a long time. But that's not the real subject of this video. If we make him look cooler, you know... Maybe add some of those gamer glasses? The real subject of this video is filmmaking by committee. Filmmaking by committee is something I've noticed for a long time now, but mainly started when I was seeing franchises I'd previously loved being changed into an unrecognisable state. Take the first Michael Bay Transformers film. It's no secret that I love the new Transformers stuff. I do enjoy where the franchise has gone in comic form, but the movie stuff leaves me lacking. Now the film gets a lot wrong, and I'll talk about that in a second, but I'd like to first talk about what it gets right. Peter Cullen is in the movie, and so is Frank Welker, but not as Megatron, so we'll give it a half point for that. Okay, now for what it gets wrong. The pacing of the film is entirely wrong. The fact that it takes almost a full hour into the film before we see the fucking Autobots is absolutely insane. The movie is called Transformers, not young Indiana Jones buys a shite car because his dad's a cheap arsehole. Dad! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I am. You're not getting a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea whose idea this was. But it was ridiculous, not to mention the completely bizarre subplot where Josh DeMal is a soldier and his wife and infant daughter are worried sick about him and he looks like he's dead to them, but really he's out fighting in the desert and he may have tried to call them? Who knows, it's never once resolved. It's just a band of generic soldiers of various minorities all walking around and making shit jokes. Left cheek, left cheek. The hell is this doing in a Transformers movie? It's for the Call of Duty kids. Uh, you remember how popular that was? We needed that for this movie. And why do we have Megan Fox in this film? And why do we have Megan Fox in any film for that matter? The sex appeal. Sex sells. But the film is designed to sell toys. Your entire audience for this should care more about talking trucks than a walking pair of assets. Right from there, without going any further, we have three distinct audiences this film is for. We've got cod kids, we've got horny perverts, and small kids. Anyone who argues that the movie isn't for kids needs to explain to me why the toys for such a movie are aimed at children. Sorry, look. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Transformers isn't even the worst offender here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has a lot to answer for. Remember the original 90s live action Turtles movie? It took a drastic change from the cartoon many of us grew up with and stayed truer to the original Mirage comics. It was darker and grittier than what we were used to and it still holds up today despite being a different take than what many of us at the time were expecting. Compare that to the recent Michael Bay produced offerings and what do you have? Oh. Why the fuck is there a Transformer in this movie? The turtles come across as creepy and very socially awkward, which makes sense to a degree, but they always had each other to bounce off of. You know, they had a lot more chemistry in the original variations. 
Once again, the recent IDW comics are a great addition to the Turtles multiverse, but the newer live action counterparts fall short. Why is Michelangelo being a creep? I mean, he kind of was in the original, but it was almost endearing. Can we keep her? I'm not even going to mention Megan Fox being in this movie. The film is completely forgettable, but its sequel and the Transformers sequels do something much worse. They play off of nostalgia. We've got to bring the fans back somehow. I wanted to see Bebop and Rocksteady, two of the most iconic villains from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, live and on the big screen. I've waited most of my life to see that. Them being included doesn't make the film any better, sadly. It just dilutes the original characters for me. Same thing happened and is continuing to happen in the Bayformers. We keep adding original Generation 1 Transformers to the live action franchise when the two have no business sharing any similarities. Bumblebee? Aside from being yellow, the two characters are nothing alike. Optimus himself is murdering people left, right, and center. No, Optimus! You got the touch! We have Ironhide. Another trigger happy idiot. I mean, compared to the right hand of Optimus he was in the cartoon, he loved to fight, but he didn't want to kill everything just for existing. Ratchet is a doctor, and he has zero personality for the live action counterpart. But fuck it. And Hound is an army thing. And the Sideswipe is a sports car. Hot Rod has his flames. Oh wait. They go for the very basic things and add them in hoping it'll draw people like me who still hold the originals close to their hearts and charge them 15 bucks to see a 3 hour mind numbing, headache inducing advertisement for a Buick in 3D IMAX. Did I say IMAX? Better make that 22 bucks a pop. Each of those movies takes zero chances and each one plays it as safe as it can. It feeds off of any recent pop culture trends and runs with it, failing horribly in the process. And it'll stick in a few masturbation jokes. For the kids. You can call it Sam's happy time or happy happy my time. special what? alone Stop. time. And look at Suicide Squad to pick on someone other than Michael Bay for a minute. The amount of clear studio meddling in that is obvious. The film is a confusing mess, with a new song every six fucking minutes. The studio took one look at how badly Batman vs Superman bombed and how well Deadpool did, struck a deal with the Hot Topic CEO and made the most incoherent mess of a movie I've ever seen. And I've seen some shitty movies. They made a gritty movie, then upped the saturation and edited it in the hopes that it would play like a Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, a band of unlikely misfits who saved the world from complete and total destruction. And then you look at something like the new Ghostbusters. I already made a video about it, but I just feel like the execs knew the film couldn't stand on its own, so they made sure that the remaining original Ghostbusters would be in the film, just so they could say it has all the original cast in big letters everywhere. What a crock of shit! So where are we at now? <sighs> Who fucking cares? Can we replace him with a girl? What's Megan Fox doing? Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this rant. I have a question for you though. Which movie do you think suffered the most from studio interference or filmmaking by committee? Let me know in the comments. Till then, I'm Mike, this is Mike's Mike. I'll catch y'all later. Back to the future. Oh, why the fuck?